this is simply a brief introduction to artificial intelligence and how patent attorneys use it and what you can do with it as well, perhaps. So let's jump right in. Artificial intelligence, short version, in my opinion, a lot of it's just overhyped marketing surrounding sensors and computer programming and predictive behavior that's modeled by a computer. It's not Skynet, the Terminator is not around the corner. Artificial intelligence also is confusing because it fits in the context of artificial neural networks, sometimes just referred to as neural networks, which I think is even more deceiving. Uh, this is not brain activity, it's computer activity modeled after brains in the sense that because you get feedback from your environment, you learn things. Well, computers can be programmed to get feedback as well and learn from their environment. And that feedback is often in the form of human feedback. So for example, uh, you might remember, or still see to this day, uh, Facebook making suggestions that you might be in a photo and even showing the, you know, or with a box around your face saying, hey, is this you? So you can tag the photo if you choose to. That's an example of Facebook's system turning that photograph or other image into data and then because of the pattern in that data suggesting that that data pattern might be representative of your picture. And so if you say yes, then the computer algorithm at Facebook has a higher degree of confidence that if it sees a similar data pattern in the future, it will be you. So quite simply, artificial intelligence is taking an input or inputs and then predicting a likely output or outcome. So how is this stuff used? Well, in short, artificial intelligence plus your feedback and your intelligence can help uh, individuals, can help the computers in combination with the individuals make better and more accurate decisions and take better actions, of course, we hope. Uh, how do attorneys use artificial intelligence today? Well, truthfully, it's really new to us too. Uh, even in intellectual property. You know, there are trademark searches, copyright searches, patent searches, and because these systems look for these patterns, uh, and they can look through so much more data than we can as individuals, and therein is the real advantage, is just the quantity of data they can crunch. Uh, they can make suggestions and help attorneys make better decisions. Uh, this might be related to logo marks for trademarks or word marks. And in the copyright context, it can help us find duplicate content and uh, kind of like the trademarks. In fact, the algorithms are real simple, uh, similar. It can look for images that might be similar to copyrighted images. If you've ever gotten a nasty letter from Getty, that's what generated it. Or maybe I should say that's the origin of what generated it. With patent searches, similar stuff. Uh, patent searches enhanced by artificial intelligence can be used to cull through more what we call prior art publications that existed, including patents that uh, could have some effect on the patentability of your own invention. And interestingly, we can also look for patterns of behavior by patent examiners themselves, and as well as art group units. Uh, a tool that you might want to look at is Patent Ninja. So you can tell whether an examiner has a percentage uh, likelihood of allowing a patent to issue with a first office action, a second office action, after something called a RCE, a Request for Continued Examination after an appeal, after a visit to the patent office. It looks for behaviors around all kinds of different uh, examiner uh, actions and tendencies. Also, artificial intelligence helps attorneys prepare office actions. I call it setting the table. It, it, there is software that will pull up the prior art that's been cited against the client 
and make it easy for us to access. It will look through the rejections in an office action and actually uh, suggest different responses to those rejections. Now, it, it's not any smarter than an attorney because there's only so many responses we can make to a particular type of rejection or objection from an examiner, but it puts them all right there and it makes them easier to see, think about, and quickly incorporate into our responses. Litigators similar, similarly use artificial intelligence to identify marks that are similar to their clients, uh, content, I mentioned Getty a little while ago, uh, and that's for purposes of enforcement. For purposes of defense, an attorney might use in, uh, the artificial intelligence to find prior art, to look through more prior art, to attack the, the intellectual property, patent, trademark, copyright, this being used in a litigation against his or her own client. Now there's a rumor that there's other things coming across the horizon such as an estimation of a cost of a case for a patent, trademark, or copyright, and also to predict certain litigant behavior, whether it's a corporation, a law firm, or even uh, some litigious individuals. So what are some of the tools you can use? I list a few here. Interestingly, the first one, CompuMark, uh, and their product is called TMGO, or sometimes TM365. Um, they actually won the Artificial Intelligence uh, Startup of the Year in Silicon Valley a couple of years ago. So that's how new this stuff is, and also how cutting edge this is the uh, gorilla in the room when it comes to all things intellectual property. They have a whole host of products that they offer, as well as Digimart, CompuTrack, Oh, and there is one free one here with respect to copyrights, and that's at the World Intellectual Property Organization, or WIPO. It is in the very middle of this uh, slide. So what are some of the benefits, downsides, risks, plus and minuses of using artificial intelligence? Benefits are, to me, obvious. You can go through way more data and hopefully find uh, the things that are more relevant faster. In fact, it can cut hours or days off certain searches and evaluations. But the downside is it's expensive. Uh, it's actually cheaper usually to go through an attorney. You can contact the companies on the previous slide directly if you do speak to their sales office, offer them feedback, uh, and sometimes they'll give you an independent user discount, you know, maybe a 14-day free trial or something. But by and large, you're going to be better off going through an attorney uh, because of the expenses involved. And attorneys, we, we can subscribe to these uh, AI systems. And because we're on a subscription, uh, we can allocate the cost across clients. And, and so per search, per client, it becomes less expensive. Another downside and risk is that you might get overly reliant on AI. You might use it, glance through just the first few results, and think you're safe and secure when you're not. So what I have noticed is sometimes on these AI systems, the tendency is to look really closely at the things that are tagged as most relevant and scan the things that are not, but all of a sudden you'll glance through the results and, you know, result, oh, I don't know, 100 out of 500. Uh, catches your eye and you're like, you know, I, I want to take a closer look at that. And all of a sudden you realize, whoa, this is the thing that maybe should be number one. So I mentioned that AI is new in this particular field and it's frankly new everywhere, right? With that newness it is inexperience. And don't think just because this is super cool, high tech stuff that it's going to be right all the time. So yes, uh, you can get better results by using it, but, but don't think just because you're using it, you're safe. Spend your time, do your homework. Uh, if you want to know more, uh, Director Yanku's remarks about artificial intelligence are available at 
a click of the link on this particular slide page. And if you're getting this before the end of October or middle of October 2019, you can click on the Share Your Thoughts About AI and Patents, which is a link to the Federal Register where you can uh, leave your comments and thoughts with the people that are reviewing, the administrators that are reviewing this stuff and making decisions about uh, patent office policy and other government policy uh, related to artificial intelligence and intellectual property patents specifically for this link. Uh, by the way, uh, sidebar, to me that is frightening because not enough people know enough about this stuff at this time, in my opinion, to be making nationwide policy decisions. Hope you enjoyed it.